All right, hey guys. Um, oh, I forgot the music, sorry. Um, okay, um, so I wanted to just show a few um, new tools um, that, you'll, uh, that I'm asking you to use um, in the uh, exercise for. So this is really about just a few other tools um, to use um, for exercise for, particularly the section tools um, in Rhino. Um, the 3D printing really is just a, um, more of a function of um, taking a piece of a model or part of a model and uh, preparing that for um, 3D printing, which is really just make sure it's right to, to the right scale um, and also um, the right file uh, type, which is a, a STL file. Um, the majority of the tools that we'd be using for this project, uh, this exercise, um, for the concept models are the steps that you already know. So the, it's really, this is about bringing these workflows together and there's no prescribed way to approach this. It's really up to you in terms of how you'd like to um, create these concept models using the steps. You know, the steps are um, outlined here, but the order really is uh, up to you. So how and when you'd like to apply these is really up to you uh, individually. Um, and the, leading to the kind of uh, concept model that you really want to achieve. And so um, that more or less is all um, review. Um, so what I'd like to do, and I'm just going to use this project that you're looking at here as, uh, as an example, and it uses um, a few of the, the tools um, that I'm asking you to work with. This is a pavilion project that I um, put together and designed um, a few years ago. It's unbuilt, never got built. Um, but I did end up using the primary tools of uh, Rhino um, and also the section tools um, to create the structural uh, um, system uh, for it. Um, and so I'll show you um, how I did that. Um, and also just as a reference, I have here a, a few images of a model, oh, I guess it's not letting me um, look at that here. Let me just pull it up quick. Um, so from this recently, I created a, a small model just as a, a, a means for me to run through some of the steps I'm asking you, um, you all to work with. Um, and I kind of jazzed it up in Photoshop a little bit with a little uh, blur and so forth. but. Um, you can see that this is um, a project that's using um, some of the etching. So you see this text that's been projected onto this surface, and I did that in Rhino. You can see the structural system that's um, worked with there, and you can see some of the panels that I created um, to help uh, cover some of the structure. In actuality, and you can tell from the other image that this is um, actually more of a, a mesh, but for the sake of the model, um, I think it, it's okay to, to show it this way. You can get a little bit more technical and use this as a template to cut maybe like a, a wire mesh or something and apply it, but um, it's just something to, to think about. And then the other structural components, these here, um, I just added those manually. Um, and the base, I just used the, um, the stack um, technique from uh, one 2, 3 d Make. And so very similar steps to what you're using. But And these... Um, really were just for the sake of the model. And so they're not necessarily precise to the d degree that this model was. This was much more precise um, in terms of where and how exactly these would be landing. So I did all of that um, arrangement in uh, Rhino with the section tools. So, but this is just mo more so just about the model. It was an experiment, exploration. Um, and so again, you know, the difference between what models are in terms of teaching yourself and showing others. Uh, there, there's a, a variety of those um, to think about. Okay, so um, what I start with, uh, here's the overall uh, model that I have. So this one has the, all the, the um, sections and so forth, the, these ribs here, and you can see that they are sort of has an opening there. I even added some extra support here to goes along with this beam that works along the top. And again, this model doesn't show any of that. And that's, you know, I think that's okay. It's just, um, this is just one kind of representation to get an idea about the scale and the texture of things. So it doesn't necessarily have to have all of those 
components. It's not meant for you know a prototype for construction necessarily, although it's close with some of these um, ribs. Um, so it's a different kind of representation. And so um, these are, um, I believe I use like six by six steel tubes here for that part of the frame. And this part of the frame, you can see it kind of comes down here. And then the rest are intended to be cut out of plate steel. Um, and this also had a, a, a polycarbonate roof on it. So I generated all of this in a rhino, but really the working part of it um, is um, was this. I was working with this as a basically just as a polysurface or a solid, similar to what um, you've been um, working with. So you can see it's a little bit confusing. Let me just move that out of the way so you can see. So from this. Right, you, you know, I created this really as the um, the framework to define um, space. So I just came up with this solid, this polysurface, this faceted um, volume. I knew I wanted it to come down structurally there. I knew I wanted there to be a little bit of compression, sort of. You know, this was meant by the community to serve as like a meeting place, also for to hold events. Um, uh, and so forth, um, and then it opens up to the street, which is this is part of a little, this whole thing, this green thing here was part of a little strip, pedestrian park. On one side was uh, um, Cesar Chavez Drive in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and on the other side was a public parking lot. So this is like a little pedestrian walkway in between there. But in any case, I um, generated this form, and I knew from this form that I was going to work with ribs and spines, structural ribs, structural spines um, to help uh, um, deal with the tectonics and the actual um, construction of it. Um, so that could be reduced to a simple uh, model here. So if we just think about the canopy piece and even for the um, the physical model, I didn't necessarily go and like uh, uh, measure these from I just think I think I took measurements from the rhino model and then cut pieces of basswood and you know it served this purpose to to help support this and again it communicates what I wanted it to didn't necessarily run that through any particular program but here you can see the general mass of the the primary canopy of the pavilion um, and this is what you'll start to work with um, for uh, using the um, section tools it's upside down. I did that. It's upside down because I was um, thinking I wanted to um, 3D print it and I knew that the top was flat so I rotated it so it was flat on the zero plane or Z equals zero plane. It's right here at zero zero so I knew where it was and then I was cutting it up um, in order to um, fit the size of the bed of the, uh, of the 3D printer. Um, I only ended up printing this part of it because it was too long and that probably too much. Um, but um, in any case, that's why it's upside down and flat this way. It's also probably a little bit easier to, to work with if you want to push this through 1, 2, 3D make. Um, um, but also uh, it'll serve its purpose um, for uh, um, the section tools. Okay, so section tools. Top. And the, for, let me go to our website here. And so this is the OneDrive. If you go into um, this file right here is media and architecture, download tutorial links. Um, these are uh, supplemental tutorials that you can go to. It also has all the downloads for um, plugins. Um, and so there's that. Let's see, there's rhinoceros, web pages, uh, creative suite. So if you go to this Rhino section tools, if you go to that website, you'll end up here. And here, basically, you'll be able to download the section tools installer for Rhino 5, and you can follow the directions in terms of installation. Once you do that, and um, those of you with a Mac may have trouble. I don't know if there's an option for the Mac, and so um, may have to come up with a workaround for that or do a little bit more research, see if we can't find one. Um, or perhaps just to run this, you could borrow someone else's computer. But once you install it and follow those directions, you'll end up with a tab at the top of Rhino here that's just for section tools. And one of the first things 
Um, I'm not going to go through all of these here. I'm really just going to go to um, to create an array. Um, layout, create an array. Okay, so um, select objects uh, to section. So I want to section this object. I will right click, pick the base point. And so it's asking for a base point. If I zoom away here, you can see it's telling me where the sections are and there's a set a number of space. So there's a set number of the sections and also the spacing of the sections. Um, I forgot what this distance was. So I'm going to say number of sections, that's fine. The spacing is 24. This is, um, I know why it's huge like that. It's because this is um, to a small scale. So let me think here. 24 at an eighth inch would be... Um, Eighth inch scale, and I want those to be two feet. That would be a quarter inch. So it should be 0.25. I would do this one to one to avoid this issue. Um, um, so it um, makes a little bit more sense that way. That should be right. So if I'm at an eighth inch, oh, I think it's actually a quarter inch. See, I'm coming up with problems here, spacing. Um, let's try one half inch. I think it might be the overall model. Um, I think that looks better. I think it's a quarter inch, so what I did here. Sorry, bear with me. Um, yeah, it was a quarter inch. Um, so I'm doing some scaling here. For you, you just type in the actual spacing that you want so two feet five feet whatever it is that you select i'm having to scale it um, scale it down for this because this overall model is already scaled for uh, a quarter inch model okay but these are in the wrong direction you see where it's turning white that's recognizing that the ones that are actually sectioning through and those that are going to miss and so i want to um doom, doom, doom. let's see direction i want to pick the y-axis and so then that'll be correct and it's spaced such that that number 19 sections is actually the actual length of this and you have to measure yours first to make sure your mass is going to work one way or the other and then you can add or um, change the number of sections all you have to do is select that enter what it is that you want I'm just going to enter 19 again and then it'll give you that um, that, uh, that number of sections so then I will click that corner. Now it's generating um, all of the sections there. So then if I look at this three-dimensionally, you can see all of those now are together. And it created a number of layers that are here as well. So the next thing that I want to do, I get to my top view, is that I'm going to ask um, the section tools to create a nested 2D layout. Um, so it's asking for the number of sections here. I'm going to say click on the list and so this is really recognizing all these layers that were just created over here. I'm going to select all, say OK. Now it's asking um, for the first um, location and now it automatically has section 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way through to 18 because it started with 0. Um, for the sections. Um, so this is just the line because this comes, these two surfaces here come um, together. You can see here. So that's why it's just a line. It's just that edge right there. But all the others are accurate um, to the overall geometry. And now I have them. They're also numbered. Um, so what I ended up doing, um, there was a few other things that I ended up adding for this. For example, um, I had a beam that was running through this, and I ended up, uh, woo, our class is going to start. Um, so I ended up including that in, in this. Um, so if I go back to the other model, I believe that has it arranged there. Let's see, go to the top view. Um, so I located the center line of where those beams are going to be. And this has ended up serving as a center line for the thickness of the cut. And I offset this 
two inches to one side, two inches to the other, I believe, um, to get an overall thickness of four inches, and that is what um, I used for the um, overall structural assembly. Let me see if I have that model. Um, fab assembly. So basically what I was trying to do is create custom outlines for all the structural members. So this could be issued to a steel fabricator. They could use the AutoCAD drawings to actually guide um, the cutting of a water jet to cut the steel, just like you used for the laser cutter. And I would have those pieces. So understanding the process by which the um, fabrication process will, will occur is helpful. This is a texture. This is actually from an aerial photograph of Milwaukee that I layered on perhaps that was going to be an etch or something and so this is the other skin that you saw in the model um, and I don't think it has the sections uh, nope doesn't have those um, let's see I can find them quick production drawings I just wanted to show you the you know the difference between that initial cut and then I created the um, offsets and that's what ended up being the the setup for those uh, for those ribs oh these are for drawings um, but essentially I close down some of these Okay, no, no, I'll try, um, I think that was it, I know I think I have a, the AutoCAD version, Axon sections here, section cuts, so this should show, um, the outlines that um, I exported from Rhino brought into AutoCAD and I included, included them in the set of drawings um, for this project. But it's basically it's as easy as that, the um, creating those um, sections and get to the right model here. So once you have this set up, even just this, you could start to work with that as a model. The one thing that you're going to struggle with is, you know, how these <clears throat> will attach one to the next. They need some other frame of reference to um, connect them in this direction, right? These slices make sense, but something needs to be um, uh, dealt with in that direction. And so here um, you can see the center line. So this is the center lines that I got from Rhino. And I think actually that's all uh, as far as I took it in Rhino. And so I had all those lines from that um, poly surface, and then I offset. So distance, you can see here, yeah, it's two inches, so these are four by four steel tubes. Um, so two inches I offset, and I also just added um, this angle as an extra support, um, thinking of this as a kind of an overall truss. Um, so you can see this is always synced up. So you can imagine setting that up, and this is consistent from one to the next. So these center lines are consistent from one section to the next and this is a steel tube running in the opposite direction and um, so you can imagine if you had these laser cut for example in our shop you could take a piece of basswood to connect all of these together and they should sort of align um, so that's one example of how the section tools um, can be used um, and then once you have the sections themselves from Rhino it's just really a matter of um, exporting these, arranging them. I added the text um, in uh, AutoCAD so they would be etched in um, just like you have been doing um, and that would be the part numbers, right? And so you start with part number one, part number two, and they're on two feet on center. Um, so that's how I created that. So I'd like you guys to explore um, a little bit of that. Um, the other thing um, to work with um, is 3D printing and now um, what I ended up 3D printing from this and I was just kind of really just experimenting I took this piece and um, again this is already down in the scale for a quarter inch um, and then I 
uh, exported that as an STL file. I knew that that was flat, so it's going to behave well with the 3D printer. Basically, you want um, some strong surface for base for the 3D printing because it's going to build up layer by layer by layer by layer. And if it doesn't have a nice solid base somehow, then you can run into some errors. So you have to be kind of careful how you do that. The plan I had was to print each one because this is the limit basically of, of the 3D printer, um, at least the one I have in my office. The, the one in, uh, in the shop I think is a little bit bigger. I was going to 3D print each of these and then um, connect them together. Um, if I was going to do that again, and let me just let me control Z and get rid of that stuff. I think I would do it a little bit differently, and so I want you guys to think about that uh, this a little bit differently. I'm going to um, basically what I want to do is maybe just take a piece of this. I'll take this, that, that. So now I have a curve. I'll go to the top, and um, what I'm going to do is just um, do a split. So let's see. I'm going to split. Objects to split. I want to split that. Right click. We're cutting objects and try to use a window. And that didn't work. Um, let's see. I'll try something else here. I'm going to go into um, front. I'm going to go into surface extrude curve straight. I'm just going to extrude that bad boy. I'm going to bring it down. I know it's cutting that. Oh, it went into a crazy angle. That didn't work. Okay, I'm going to try something else. Curve, top. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to project it down so it's flat on the construction plane. So I'm going to transform, project to construction plane. Delete um, input objects. I'm going to say yes. So now that should be flat on the ground. And then I should be able to go back into extrude uh, curve straight. I'm going to go straight up because um, it was referencing the angle um, that that was at before. I'm going to move this down. Oops. And I'm going to use that to split this object. Um, so the idea here is maybe I would use a 3D, um, one, two, 3D make to work with that or um, to create the ribs using the section tools um, and maybe 3D print this piece. Um, it's still kind of long, so at the scale of a quarter inch, it might be a little bit too big. So you have to think about that. It might still have to be split up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into split. Um, select objects to split. I want to split that. Right click. Cutting object. That. Enter. Boom. Um, so now I can just hide this or delete it. And now I know I have this piece and that piece. And all I have to do is um, to create a solid for those is just draw um, a surface. So I'll get back onto the right layer and create a surface here. One, two, three, enter. One, two, three, enter and select that all, type in join, join that bad boy. Now that's a solid. <clears throat> um, I guess I could have copied those and just moved them over here. Um, but I'll create surfaces to enclose this to make sure that this is, again is a closed polysurface solid. So there it is, select it all, join, boom. And now I can export this if I wanted to 3D print this and it was at the right scale that would fit on the bed. Export selected and STL file. And so then uh, that would be the same file type obviously for 123D Make or any of the other. So I would do that with this to create interlocking panels or um, what have you or create the sections like I just showed you using the sections tools. Other than that, the overall workflow is, is up to you. I mean, the idea here is that you're starting to use the techniques um, in addition to um, the um, possibility to use other textures. You know, I talked about this texture, and I'm just going to show you something 
um, quickly here. Let me see if I can control C, copy, go back to the other file. Let's see if I can paste it. I think it pasted. Oh, but it's huge. Okay. Then I can scale that. Uh, scale factor 1 over 48. So this is just one piece. So this would be just like the line work that you would get from that we used in the the last project where you um, had the material and then created the outlines. Um, you can export that as a DWG, then you can bring that into Rhino. And what I'm able to then to do in Rhino, um, let me go into front and I'm going to make sure that this is above. This is also how I got the text on this. I just lined it up accordingly. What I can do is I know that this is over that surface and you know if I wanted to better align it or fill in a specific area I would be more careful with this but just to show you the capability of the the tool I can take this and its location I could project it onto these surfaces um, so I can go into top and maybe I'll just rotate this quick um, let's see how does it I don't see exactly how it fits all right so I'm going to move it I want to project that. Okay, so now I can um, go into transform and um, oh, it's um, sorry, curve, curve from objects, and project. So select curves and points to project um, all of those. Um, I can hold Control to key down and deselect that, deselect that. Okay, and then I'll enter, select surfaces, poly surfaces, meshes to project onto, this, enter, and it, just like I projected the construction plane, it's projecting that all on the, um, this poly surface. I think it'll do it on the bottom and the top. So it just created that way, even wrapped around the edge uh, there. Um, so if you wanted to, you know, use that, um, project on there, and then, um, use that uh, as part of an etching pattern or what have you you could start with this and work with it that way or you could do this basically and just put this texture uh, in AutoCAD and this is a little bit narrow but you could just overlay that into the areas and trim it out where you didn't want it and apply it that way the other quick thing I wanted to show you in Rhino um, let's see I'm gonna take this Move it over there. So even this, you well, it might be a little bit difficult, but you could maybe fold that flat, um, and then uh, do something with that. Okay. So th there's this. So now this is just a series of faceted panels from the original, the fragment of the original that I created. If I wanted to very quickly just uh, even bypass one, two, three D make, I can use a tool. Um, in a Rhino that's called Unroll Developable Surface. So it's almost like a cardboard box um, that's been flattened out. Um, Rhino will do the flattening out for you. So if I go into um, Surface and uh, Unroll Developable Surface, um, select curves uh, on poly surface to unroll. I'm just gonna, I do not want it exploded. I can add labels so you can match it up between what's going to lay out and um, how it's related to this. Um, sometimes those get in the way, but you can do that. And it's going to lay it out here close to zero, zero. So I have to move this stuff over. And you'd have to sort through some of these fragments. Um, but basically, these are all the flattened out. Oh, that was the, the other piece. Um, Basically, what we're looking at is the flattened um, overall uh, getting a phone call. Um, the flattened overall pattern for this. So you could take this here. Um, I would separate this out though, so you'd have to complete that a little bit. You could also then go into curve, curve from objects, and silhouette, and that's just the outline of it. Or Control Z, 
you can go to curve from objects wireframe uh, would require a little bit of cleaning up so now let's just capture the wireframe I could group that as the group tool and then move it aside Oops. and I could export this into um, AutoCAD you'd want to get in here maybe delete some of these lines that's from the surface and just keep the outlines where you want things cut or etched or what have you and obviously this would be a problem you'd have to separate this piece out because of the way it folded um, but just a few tools um, for you to think about and use as you're getting through these concept models hopefully that's going to be helpful and um, class is starting so I have to do that all right thanks guys till the next one